that's the negative wire that I just connected, and I don't have any red tape, so I'm going to temporarily tape this white so I don't get it mixed up. Eventually, when I get red tape, I'll tape the positive red and leave the negative black. And look what I just found, red tape. <laughs> so I'm cutting this in half, and the other half is going to be the positive wire. My combiner box is going to be mounted right inside here in the loft so I can flick the breakers from the inside. And so then I'll have to go back and thread this through. And I'll have to do it again when I put my next string up. I'm not doing that today because I don't really want to climb on the roof anymore. I've got little wire clips that will clip all of this under here, but I forgot to bring them. I'm also missing one critical piece. So I'm going to have to take this all apart and put it back together. The, it didn't come in the mail on time, but it's the strain relief that makes that connection watertight. Oh, there's a wasp. My fingers aren't dexterous, dexterous enough? Dexteritous? There we go. Now it goes like that. There we go. That, it actually goes like this. There we go. Ah, uh, there's little yellow buttons underneath that push in that make it snap in firmly to the DIN rail. Let's check our open circuit voltage. That's good. Okay, so we're getting 39.5, which is right about where we probably want to be for a 24 volt system coming off the of panels. It's uh, it's two 12 volt panels in series, or yeah, in series. I'm gonna build or buy a vented battery box for these batteries. If anyone knows any good suggestions, let me know in the comments. DC breakers. We're going to connect the PV array negative to the charge controller. And I've got my breaker off on my hot. So I got all the wires connected. Let's turn this on and see what happens. So it's saying it's in bulk. I'm going to take a voltage reading at the PV input. We're at 38.3 volts, which is in the range of where it should be. Now let's take a reading going into the battery. 24.7 again. So I've got to check the settings on the charge controller and make sure that we've got these dip switches in the right spot. All right, so I just uploaded the firmware and now it's thinking, connecting. I did this already, let's see what happens. Firmware updated, continue, and that would 
makes sense that the amps would be higher to the battery because it's dropped the voltage to an ideal charging voltage. So I wonder what we can mess with in here. So we're getting 43 watts on a cloudy day. <laughs> so now it's, it's raining outside and we're, we're still getting a little bit of power off the panels, which is kind of cool. So here's the info on my battery. Okay, so I've got, I found the right settings for my battery and I've got it set now. And it also says that anything you set with the app will override whatever the dip switch is set on. So that's good, I was, I was curious about that. Okay, so this is what I've done so far. I've mounted the inverter, the fuse, and the AC distribution. And so now I need to test to see if the inverter, neutral, ground, or bonded. So I'm gonna test it for continuity with my multimeter and see what it says and then i'll know if i can bond the neutral okay so this is basically what i got done today i'm gonna to call it quits for today uh, hey guys thanks for watching part one of my solar install in part two i'm going to finish installing the system in part three i'm going to talk about some of the decisions i made and why i made them you don't see too many medium-sized systems so hopefully this can help you guys out i've got a lot of neat projects coming up so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those thanks for watching